On today's show, Apple Watch production ramps back up, Apple explores Risk 5, and App Store rules are relaxed. Plus, your iCave answers. I'm iCave Dave, and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. And if you want the latest Apple news, leaks, and rumors every weekday at 12 UTC, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring my bell. And today's video is brought to you by my merch store because there's a sale on, and you might as well take advantage. So, we've got a whole bunch of Apple themed stuff you can grab. Things like my hello mug, which we did before the iMac came back with that hello logo. So hopefully we won't get sued. Grab them while they're hot. But all you need to do if you want to pick something up is head over to iCaveDave.com forward slash merch and use the code sunset uh, and that will be active until Monday and you'll save 10% winning. So into the news, Apple Watch Series 7 production should ramp up by late September and we're going to need new watch bands. So after some delays to mass production, it looks like Apple will ramp up the production of the Apple Watch Series 7 with its redesign by the end of the month. However, it's unclear how Apple will handle this in terms of the September product announcements. Given the EEC device registrations, we've seen the presumed lineup being iPhone 13 and uh, iPhone 13 Pro lines, the Apple Watch Series 7, and the redesigned MacBook Pros, possibly alongside announcements like the third generation AirPods with their redesign and the expansion of services like Apple Fitness Plus with time to run and time to do something else probably, Apple Arcade and potentially more. Given the delays in production, it's unclear if Apple will reshuffle the lineup or simply announce the device with shipping dates pushed later as they did in 2020 with the iPad Air redesign announced in September but not shipping until the iPhone 12's release later in October. Of course, it's possible that Apple will have enough devices available at launch as expected at the end of September, but if that's the case, expect supply constraints. So if you want a particular color or design, you'd probably better be ready the second they go on sale. It's not clear if this year's Apple Watch will contain any new sensors for health tracking or if the new design language and 16% larger displays will be the main selling point here. It's also expected that the existing Apple Watch bands will not be directly compatible with the redesign, although Apple might well retain the attachment mechanism so existing bands will be usable but like without it lining up quite right just at the edges, much like if you attach a smaller Apple Watch strap to a larger Apple Watch or vice versa. So it'll fit, but it'll just look a bit weird. Apple is hiring a RISC-V high-performance programmer with experience in Neon microarchitecture in ARM CPU cores. So right now, Apple's main focus is, of course, been the ARM uh, architecture, but RISC-V is an option that can be used for open source kind of devices. ARM costs an awful lot to license. If you want to do an, I, an ARM core, an ARM chip, it's into the hundreds of thousands of dollars as far as I understand. Whereas if you use RISC-V, it's kind of open. It's like a branch of what ARM would have been. It's that kind of thing. You will work in software and hardware cross-functional team, which is implementing innovative RISC-V solutions and state-of-the-art routines. This is to support the necessary computation for such things as machine learning, vision algorithms, signal and video processing. The vision algorithms suggest that perhaps this is something to do with Apple Glass, but it's not clear because obviously computer vision could include anything from Apple Car with uh, navigation, autonomous driving, to AR, to all sorts of other stuff. So it's not necessarily that. Now RISC-V is generally used in lower power Internet of Things implementations at this point. And there's no specific reason that, as an architecture, it couldn't be scaled to larger applications like full computer systems. And I believe there are already some out there. RISC-V is, I believe, an open standard that can be used without a license. So it's not an I not a bad idea to have engineers and researchers on the staff with experience. As there's always the danger with a licensed architecture like ARM that if it changes hands, uh, NVIDIA, yes, we are looking at you, that the associated costs and freedoms with its use could change over time. It could indicate that Apple is implementing it in other applications though, like HomeKit devices and some wearables or even accessories, but I think it's an interesting development regardless. Let me know in the comments what you think they might be using it for. And finally, before we get to your iCave answers, Apple has made some concessions on the App Store, allowing reader apps which encompasses streaming content, digital magazines, books, audio or video by paid subscription to actually link out to their own websites for signups. Now this means Netflix, for example, could replace their slightly annoyed sounding message that says you can't uh, sign up in the app, which is a bit of a hassle with an easy link to their sign-up page so that Apple won't get any App Store commission from sign-ups. This is the first time that Apple has allowed this and 
it's close to what Fortnite was actually removed from the App Store for, basically sidestepping Apple's in-app purchase system. It'll be interesting to see what develops off the back of this. Do you think this is going to open up to games and digital products? Who knows? And into IK Vances, Uncle Bu asks, IK Vances, with the upcoming Mac Pro reported to have multiple M-series chips to make them more powerful, do you think that Apple would or should build a MacBook Pro with two M-series chips, or do you think it would be too power hungry? Maybe a future 18-inch MacBook Pro? Yeah, I would like to point out, just uh, in case people aren't aware, I think I was the first person to say that the, uh, the Pro series would probably use multiple M1X. Um, SOCs, uh, because I, I said right at the start, like that's the easiest way to scale is have multiple SOCs and uh, pair them up. But it seems like everyone else is kind of catching up with that idea now. And it certainly helped when it came out that uh, Apple was going to be using 20 cores and 40 cores. That came via Mark Gurman and that lines up perfectly with what the changes to M1X are with its two efficiency cores and eight performance cores. Uh, but I need to dig through my back catalogue and find out when I first said that, because I'm pretty sure I was first. Anyway, uh, in terms of an M1X MacBook Pro with multiples, I don't see it happening, but what I could see potentially is if this architecture exists quite openly in the future, that maybe you could grab an M1X Mac Mini and kind of connect it via USB-C as like an e cpu an e soc like externally um and kind of harness that power as an extra if you're at the desktop for example i think that'd be a really interesting option uh i don't know if it's something that's feasible uh, but i do think that trying to put two m1x's inside a macbook pro might be pushing it a bit even if it's 18 inches in size because remember we can't go any bigger with the batteries than we're going with the 16 inch already with that 100 watt hour battery purely because you wouldn't be able to fly anywhere with it. And not being able to move it around does kind of reduce the point of a laptop. Josh asks, IK Vances, do you have some leaks and rumours on the AirPods 3? Unfortunately, not really. The only things that we've heard is that there is a potential health uh, sensor being built into them, and it's not a health sensor as such, but the fact that it can use the internal microphones to uh, estimate your respiration rate when you're exercising. So it would be helpful in determining determining your VO2 max a little bit more um, accurately than you can already do with the watch. Uh, this already tracks it and basically a whole bunch of other stuff, but being able to note your respiration rate by listening to the way you're breathing might be a really helpful thing. Uh, other than that, it looks like special audio will come to them, and fingers crossed we'll be getting uh, airplay support as well, so we can get lossless audio um, over the air, because Bluetooth just don't have the bandwidth for it. Airplay does. Josh asks, I gave answers, what is your other job apart from YouTube? Now, somebody uh, replied in the comments, I think it might have been Evan saying, I think it's a bartender, and that kind of is close, uh, but not quite right. Um, so I'm actually a brand ambassador for uh, drinks brands. So I work with a company called Old J Rums. Um, that's my kind of main spirit that I work with. Also Arbor Gins and Monin Liqueurs and a few beers that we look after, Cruz Campo, things like that. That's my other job, uh, very separate from what I do here. Eurytech asks, IK Vances, have you ever planned on updating your outro and text transitions because IK Vances have a different look? Yeah, so obviously we did a standalone IK Vances show yesterday. I did originally do IK Vances um, text and outros and intros. However, I then shortened down all the intros since then. And um, actually the music that we use on the main show now was originally uh, created for IK Vances. Um, the one that we had for the main show was a little bit more chilled, but I kind of like the new... Uh, funkier music. Linda Lawson asks, IK Vances, why do I need a hub to get the full transfer speeds from ports on my M1 Mac Mini? Is Apple planning to fix this? And honestly, this isn't a an issue that I was aware of, so I don't honestly know. I've never had any issues with transfer speeds on my Mac Mini, but then I also don't really pay much attention to them because they're fast enough for what I need. I run a couple of uh, I run a couple of external SSDs on it and a couple of spinny big fat hard drives um but uh, i've never really had any issues with transfer speeds um can you shoot me over a link to the issue and i'll have a look evan rogers if apple made mac os available to oems instead of solely on their own products would it be more popular than windows 
Difficult question because A, macOS works so well because of the hardware that it's on, because it's specifically written to the hardware. That's why it's so optimized. So if they made it available to OEMs, it would be very difficult for them to optimize the hardware because if you use exactly the same hardware, then what's the point in doing it separately? Also, I think part of the reason that macOS feels so nice is because you always use it on decent hardware. There's no kind of using it on stuttery old crap, which Windows is designed to kind of run on whatever pile of pieces that you uh, kind of assemble. But also it would depend on how much Apple charged these OEMs, because if they charged enough to make it worth Apple's while, then it probably would be a lot more expensive than getting a Windows machine still. And I don't think that that's kind of the, the stumbling block. I think price in general and the compatibility is probably more of the issue for a lot of people. When it comes down to would people, given the choice at the same price point on the same quality hardware, choose macOS over Windows? I'm pretty sure they would because most people don't want to be managing disk defrags and all that kind of malarkey and worrying about antivirus all the time. I think most people would probably go this is nicer to use, so yes, they would probably choose it. And James Apple asks, so when are you and Sarambite starting the Victory Through Air Power podcast? Hashtag I gave answers. Watch this space, but there isn't long to wait. Okay, guys, that's it for this show. Don't forget you can use the code sunset at icavedave.com forward slash merch to pick up some pretty sexy looking Apple stuff, uh, even a shirt like this, look. It's all branded, man. I'm all set. These commemorative ones as well will probably go away after the iPhone event, I guess, because I, I feel like that's long enough. It'll have been out then for a month. Uh, so if you do want to pick any of it up, 10% off this weekend until Monday. Get on it. iCaveDave.com forward slash merge. Use the code SUNSET. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.